So today, myself as Guardian Eagle with Collector, uh, we're going to be looking over the War of Rights community picked maps from the favorite map to the least favorite map. We're going to go through each of the three battlefields, Antietam, Harper's Ferry, then South Mountain. Uh, for all the rankings, you'll see the map name and then to the next of it in parentheses will be the average rank. So that just shows what the average placement of that map was overall. So if you had a person submit a map at rank one and a person submit a map as rank 12, and then you average those and it'd be like six or something. So you, you forgot one of the map rotations. What Shepherdstown? Shepherdstown. That it's common. Ah, uh, yes, it's common. It is the mill ruins. The mill ruins. That map is my favorite. I don't know about you. Oh yes, that, mill, yes. mill ruins. Dude, Shepherdstown. Whoever it's designed on the, that, uh, it's, on the, it's on the alpha branch right now. It's coming to full release pretty soon. Whoever designed that map, they need a raise. They do. They so, should be senior senior admin on the Word Rights Discord. Of course. You need some respect, too. So with that being said, Collector, what do you think the worst map's going to be on Antietam? Um, if the worst map isn't fucking Hooker's Push, I'm going to be very disappointed. All right. At rank 18, I hate that we map. have the West Woods. Are you serious? That is one of my favorite maps in this game. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> West Woods is so much fun. If you're a Yankee. So it had an average rank of 12.46. In uh, 17th place, we had Progress Mill, which you know, I, I, I hate that. I fucking hate that map. I love that map, dude. It's so tiny <laughs> with the barn. Ev not the barn, the house. Not everyone the fights the over mill. that. Yeah, the, the mill. mill. The mill. Yeah, the mill. Even though the mill is not on point, oh. everyone still fights right. on it. I, I got to tell you about my hatred. My bitter hatred for Progress Mill. That map fucking sucks balls. Okay, number one, it's very poorly optimized. Like, I'm sorry, Campfire Games. You just, you kind of need to get your fit together. Because, I don't know about y'all, my computer is a half-decent computer. And it freezes, like, every four seconds I'm on that map. Uh, and it makes me want to pull my hair out of my head. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it is kind of fun. You know, you, how often do you get to fight over water? Especially with cab pistols, and you get carbines on both sides. So, it's far from the worst map in the game. Um, as you can see, it's second to the last worst map in the game. So, obviously, not the worst. So, yeah, you would you place it a lot higher if the optimizations were fixed? I would if I got good frame rate and I if I knew my guys. Like the reason we don't play progress mill and regimental gameplays is because too many people's games crash or they have trouble playing it. Um, if this map was fixed to where it, that was even remotely an issue, I think hands down this would like easily, easily be a 9 out of 18 for me. <laughs> well, there we go. With that being said, number 16 on the list is Miller's Cornfield. Wow. You know... We don't play I, that often, though. I can't say I'm surprised because... A lot of people love to hate on Miller's, but it's it's one of my favorite maps. I just, I love, number one, I love the challenge of it. Number two, I love the history. I mean, you get the fourth Texas, or sorry, excuse me, the first Texas. You get, uh, is it the other, Ar is it the third Arkansas? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't recall. I think it's another regiment in the Texan Brigade. I might have gotten that. I probably did get that wrong. I'm trying to think. But uh, you get two Iron Brigade regiments. You get the 14th Brooklyn from the Eastern Iron Brigade, the 6th Wisconsin from the Western Iron Brigade. You put them together in this cornfield where you can't fucking see. That is one of my favorite Antietam maps because it, mo you know, that's a pretty faithful recreation of Miller's Cornfield. And um, it's just chaotic and fun, just like the actual Miller's Cornfield. So that one I would put in probably my top five. So I very vehemently disagree with this ranking yeah it might be because of all the the chaos and not knowing what's happening it might be low well, for that reason don't like that but i love that <laughs> i Dude, think that's fun yeah going behind the enemy team and killing their officer oh while and blurring sound pad you can you can rambo on this map and uh you can shoot the enemy spawn um it's in the open and if you have a rifle if you're at 14th brooklyn and you get a uh anyway i'm not going to give people bad ideas but <laughs> you get so, buck and ball if you're a rebel. I didn't know anyway. that, but yeah, yeah. Number, the first Texas. Number fifteen is East Woods. 
you know, that's a fair pick. Um, Eastwood's one of the most biased maps in the game. Um, very Confederate biased. However, I, I kind of like the the Woods maps. Again, Westwoods, Eastwoods, we find ourselves playing those two maps together more often than not, I'd say. Um, they're both biased towards, you know, one side Westwoods, Yankees for some reason. Eastwoods, the Rebels, even though historically, I think it was the complete opposite. Twelfth Corps kind of swept up the Eastwoods, and uh, Sumner Second Corps got chewed to shit in the Westwoods. But I like Eastwoods because of the challenge of the Union. Like, the Union has a hard time, even with the Sharps rifles. And if you're a Confederate, it's just fun to kind of steamroll through the woods. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can play that map. But uh, that being said, it is a very biased map, so I can definitely see how it went at the number 15 spot. And with that being said, moving on to number 14, we have Piper Farm. Uh, kind of agree with that. Piper Farm, more of an average map. Uh, I do like the 20th New York on that map. It's a very fun regiment. You don't get to play with the Mississippi Rifles very much. Uh, Union's got that nice stone wall looking towards point. Uh, Confederates got the artillery kind of out in the open. Union artillery very far behind the line. Uh, the only thing is, I find it to be more of a Union-biased map which is weird because it's supposed to be a Confederate victory in real life. But, um, you know, it. I think Piper Farm's pretty fun. I would put that up higher, personally. But uh, Yeah, I would probably put it towards... I can see it being in the lower half of this list, so... Sorry. Yeah, I'd probably put it towards the middle. Because it's like, it's. I like the map, it's just not memorable. So, let's move on to number 13 on our list, is Otto and Sherrick Farms. Jeez. Oh, Personally, I, I really like Auto and Sherrick Farms. This is, again, one of my top five, probably. I remember back before the artillery release when uh, the meta of this map was sitting on the right stone wall of your union and just volleying the uh, Confederates for <laughs> until they hit breaking, basically. And it was the more, most boring map. But there's so much you can do because it's such a small map and there's such good cover. If you're Confederates, you can charge the union stone wall immediately. You catch them with their pants down. If you're Union, you can charge that right, push down the hill, and then up the hill and charge the Confederates. Totally flank their right side. You can move around the left of the house. You can charge in the house. It's great if you're a skirmisher. There's lots of stuff to hide behind. You can get behind the rebel flank. You can get inside the house. If you're Ramboing, it's just so much fun. You can sneak around that left flank. You can snipe the artillery crews. I really like this map. This is definitely in my top five so i disagree this one as well collector apparently but, uh, is out of i love touch. it i love auto and shark the war of rights moderator is out of touch with the community here i love auto and shark <laughs> so number 12 we have pry house which you know, is kind of, I, I find it kind of surprising because i've seen this map be like a lot of stand and shoot for a while which yeah. eh, not my taste so yeah, I can see that as well. But I can see how Confederates would like this one because typically it's an easy victory. And I can see how Union would like this because it is more of a challenge. And they also get the 5th New York uh, Zouabs, which do have the Sharps rifle. So I think that puts it back into somewhat of a uh, favorable opinion. Um, so, yeah, Pry House, it's, it's an okay map. It's a very difficult uh, defense for Union. It's a fun attack for the Confederates. It's always kind of fun to play... Uh, on that cornfield and around the like peripherals of the main road, which is the main point of contention. Just see what you can do there. Artillery for both teams. So I can see how that's up there. Yeah. So with that being said, number 11 is Hills Counterattack. That's, this is, I don't like Hills Counterattack. I you don't. know, there was a time where we would play Hills Counterattack for like every single goddamn event that's probably why and i was getting so bored of it but uh hills counterattack it's a very very balanced map i will say that it's a union defense i think it's slightly confederate biased most of these maps are attacker biased inherently so that's probably it but um i really like the units involved you get burnside's ninth core units i think it's the ninth new york and the fourth rhode island and then on the Confederates, you get, uh, I want to say, the Palmetto Sharpshooters and the 12th South Carolina. Um, 12th South Carolina being part of AP Hill's Light Division. Uh, arriving from Harper's Ferry, they just captured the Union uh, garrison there. 
and finished paroling the last Union prisoners, which is why they were late to the battle. Um, but wearing captured Union infantry uniforms. They're, they're going to be blue-clad. One of my favorite things to do is hop in a public match on Hill's counterattack, select 12 South Carolina Sergeant Major, and just pretend to be a Yankee because you're wearing all blue. And uh, it's you know one of the most fun maps for Ramboing. I've uh, never tried so that. It's a lot of fun. One time I got into the Union line, sorry, this is a tangent, and I started ordering volleys as the <laughs> Sergeant Major of the... Uh, <laughs> the four, I, I claim to be the Sergeant Major of the 4th Rhode Island, and nobody questioned me since I just kept talking and didn't give him a second. But I was actually the Sergeant Major of the 12th South Carolina. That's hilarious. Um, but, yeah. But uh, this map is, I think, very dry because there's only so many ways you can play it because most of the map's just in the open and there's just a hill with some cover at the top. So, eh, I would have put this towards the bottom. So with that being said, into our top 10, we have Hooker's Push. I fucking hate this map. Okay, where do I even start? I don't even know where to start. Okay, so first off, you have to walk like five minutes. <laughs> you have to walk through the north. You spawn at the edge of the north woods. You walk through the D.R. Miller farm. You walk through the Miller cornfield. And then you finally get into the spot where the rebels are, which is... Um, just north of the Dunker Church, north, uh, north, west, the east, um, up to the west of the East Woods, kind of in that clearing there, and that's that's where you fight over basically the area just north of the Dunker Church on the the Muma farm, and um, point of contention is kind of out in the open. The rebels have two groupings of rocks, the Yankees have two groupings of rocks, and you just sit there and shoot at each other until somebody finally makes a move for the other. And then once you die, you have to wait five more minutes to walk up to the... F ah, I hate that map. you you got to walk so far. And, Dan, the, the thing that I really hate about this eagle, and I'm going to go on a huge tangent about this, is the two Union regiments. you got the, the what, the 2nd Wisconsin, which is in the Western Iron Brigade of the 1st Corps. But you also have, for some, some reason, you have the 1st United States Sharpshooters, which is in the 5th Corps. Fifth Corps of the Union Army right now at the Battle of Antietam. Guess what? They're not pushing down to the south from the North Woods. No, they're they're sitting across the Antietam Creek with their thumbs up their butts as part of Porter Fifth Corps. They're just sitting around waiting for McClellan to order them into combat, which he never does. The first United States sharpshooters they didn't fire a shot in anger at the Battle of Antietam, and yet they're on the map hookers push simply because the developers apparently, I don't know, uh, they, they wanted to put the first United States sharpshooters in the game, and apparently they're featured in this instead of, I don't know, one of the made-up scenarios that they could have put them in. Instead, the second United States sharpshooters actually did participate in the assault on Hooker's Push. They were in the Eastern Iron Brigade, along with the, uh, the 14th Brooklyn, like we mentioned before. But the developers didn't feel to put them in. They put the, the wrong sharpshooters in. So every single time I play this map, I think about my hatred for historical inaccuracies, and I get mad at the Danish developers of this game because they put the wrong fucking sharpshooters in, and they know they put the wrong sharpshooters in, but they don't change it. They don't change it. They don't fucking change it. It's the wrong sharpshooters, Eagle. Only I knew the historical accuracies of this battle. I do not know much specifics, but a lesson learned. And with that lesson learned, let's move on to number nine here. Cook's counterattack. Yeah. Um, this map is probably the most Confederate biased map in the game. Um, but again, kind of what we're what we're seeing with the theme is the more uh, you know, the more biased maps are kind of liked by everybody because one, it's fun to win, and two, it's fun to have a challenge. So I can definitely see this one. Um, a very challenging Union defense map. So I like it. I like it at number nine. So moving on. Actually, Cook's Countercharge is the middle map. Now to number eight. So the top half oh. is the Eastwood Skirmish. Eastwood Skirmish, I really like... Um, personally, it's... It, you know, Union is forced to attack across an open field which um, 
for the Union, the two regiments they have are the, uh, I want to say, 3rd and 12th Pennsylvania, which are the 32nd and 42nd Pennsylvania Reserves. Uh, they're actually called the 3rd and 12th historically, but whatever. Um, that is a great map, I think, because you get Buck and Ball with the 32nd, and you get Sharps with the 42nd. So you get the best of both worlds. And I think that's just such a fun map to play as Union. And Confederates, it's kind of a tough defense, but if you hold, you can have a ton of fun just slaying Yanks in the open. So that's a good map. I like it. So moving on to our number seven spot here is the Sunken Lane, or as I like to call it, Bloody Lane. A fun map indeed. I haven't played it in a while. Oh, yeah. I, I love the Bloody Lane. We played that uh, just on Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't there. You were doing battle line network but uh imagine sunken lane easily one of my favorites i would probably put this as number one obviously i'm a little biased leading the irish brigade but uh nothing's more fun than a loading buck and ball uh praising uh, general marr for giving the 69th new york the uh m1842 springfield god's chosen weapon uh and killing four rebels in the face with one one ship buckshot as you're charging the second lane, blaring uh, the Irish volunteers. I love that map. Um, Confederates probably don't like it, but again, we're we're seeing this trend with uh, very biased maps actually trending higher than you'd imagine. I think Confederates like the challenge of defending that, and to their credit, Confederate artillery has a great position. They can inflict a lot of casualties on the Union. So I love second lane at number seven. I personally would put that higher. But I uh, love that map. It's one of my favorites. I would agree with you on the higher spot. With that being said, moving on to number six, we have the Roulette Lane. Roulette Lane is seriously one of my favorite maps. I um, Yeah, this is definitely in my top five. So I agree with the number six spot, kind of. I would have put it higher. But uh, Roulette Lane, incredibly Confederate biased. This is probably second only to Cook's. It's a very tight... Sorry, you were going to say something? Yeah, no, I think over time, especially with more players, it's become USA bias, and I think I like it more for that reason now. Oh, yeah, I I was just about to say on that. It's a very compact map. It's one of the smallest ones. Like Hagerstown Turnpike is very small. Rulet Lane is also very tiny. And for that reason, it's one of my favorites on Ramboing, too. There's just so many corners. You can go around the lake. You can go in the very top right woods, kind of over by the Union Hill. You can go inside the houses. Um, there's just so many different ways to play it as a skirmisher, as a Rambo, as a leading a line. I mean, I love roulette line. There's just so much you can do with it. Uh, tickets are very Confederate biased, but like like you said, with the increase in numbers, a 300 player server, the density of the Union on that point of contention, that can definitely be something very hard to break, especially if you have effective artillery uh, commanding on that hill. Um, you could definitely put up a solid defense there if you're Union. So I like I like it as it's a challenging map for both teams depending on the skill level of the commanders. And I think that's why it earns its spot at number six. So moving on to our top five now. Here on number five, we have Hagerstown Turnpike. A little uh, high for myself. Personally, I love Hagerstown Turnpike. I think, again, like Rulay Lane, um, it's a very small, tight little map. Uh, there's a lot of combat going on with it. Personally, I like Hagerstown Turnpike before the artillery update. I think that made it a lot more fun. But um, again, you get the, the really cool units on both teams. You get uh, uh, the 14th Brooklyn Chassuers in the Eastern Iron Brigade. And I think you get the uh, either the 2nd or 6th Wisconsin in the Western Iron Brigade. So uh, you get the Iron Brigades on the Union, and the Confederates get the Louisianans. Uh, the cool Louisiana and Zouaves. Uh, so I just, I like both units. I like the history behind all the different units that are being engaged. And the Hagerstown Turnpike itself is just one of the most infamous spots on the Antietam battlefield too. And that just makes me smile every time I think about it. But um, it's just a very small, compact, hot fight the entire time, you know. Very winnable by both teams. It is a union bias map, but still a ton of fun. And I like Hagerstown in my top five. So at number four, we now have Pry Ford. You know, I like Pry Ford, but I think genuinely it's overrated. 
Um, I think people get hyped with the cavalry, which is fair. It, it's really nice to have, you know, carbines and pistols. Uh, and it is a very nice, good open map. There are nice deflates. You can definitely do a lot of high skill maneuvering. Um, you get nice cover, nice deflates, artillery. It's beautiful. I don't know if I would put it inside my top five, but I think Pride Ford's a solid map for sure. So I, I'm not too mad at the pick at number four, but I do think it's overrated. I like it. It's open, cavalry, fast reloads. Except there could be the chance Union sits back and just shoots, which I wouldn't like it for that, but fun charges with the Cav. And moving on to our top three. At the number three spot, we have Burnside's Bridge. I fucking hate Burnside's Bridge what? with passion. I don't like that map. I think it's boring. And, um... I don't know. I, I think it's it's a beautiful map. They did a really good job detailing in the bridge and the stone wall. But other than that, I, I don't like the terrain very much. I think the Union gets too bottlenecked. And, um... I don't know. I don't know if that's the map's fault or if it's just, you know... Uh, you know, I don't know. They're just the play styles of the teams. But I can't find myself having fun on Burnside's too often. It's Union, when they charge across that river, it tends to spread out too much. It gets too dispersed. And they don't stick together. Nine times out of ten, I'm not having fun on Burnside. But there's always that one in ten where everything just lines up perfectly. So... You know, I can see how people put it up there, but Burnside's is probably my least favorite map. I just don't like it. If the CSA pulls back and tries to just defend the stone wall, I put Burnside's as low, but if they try to defend the bridge, like the other night's event, definitely really high. I would have fun as Union even if I got slaughtered because it's fun to watch the guys yeah. in front of you get Oh, ab up. absolutely. If the Rebels actually try and hold the stone wall, or uh, hold the bridge, it's a ton of fun. I mean, that's what historically happened, too. But not, you know, nine times out of ten, they just pull back, and Union has to go across. And when Union goes across, that's when they pounce. And that's, I don't know. Yeah, I would agree there. So, it's we a, have, sorry. I, I, I don't personally like Burnside, but I understand why people do. So, so yeah, we have our final two. It's between Dunker's Church and Nicodemus Hill, a fair and balanced map. Which one do you think is number one? Because we're going to reveal that next. I was Dunker's Church. You are correct. Dunker Church won, <laughs> and Nicodemus Hill got second place. Look at the gap between Nicodemus Hill and Dunker yeah. Church. So people oh, really, that, really that, like. That surprise me. Dunker Church. Honest. Oh well. Which one are we going to talk about first? Whatever you want. Uh, let's do Nicodemus Hill, and then we'll save Dunker Church for last. The fair and Nicodemus Hill, a fair and balanced map, is for me one of the most hard maps to understand in this game. Um. Yes. We, I, I played this map tonight, and we lost as Union, which uh, surprises me very much. Um, came down to the last second during a, a final melee. We lost by, like, five guys. Uh, but I digress. Um, <laughs> it's still haunting me in my mind. Nick Demas Hill used to be a massive Confederate bias map. Union would almost never play it at events. Um uh, but then I guess our strategy just changed and we started moving around that right flank. There's so much you can do on that map to play it. Um, you can push up that right flank where the rebel artillery can't hit you. The only issue is you get pinned down from the rebels on the top of the hill in the woods. Or you can try and push up that left flank, but the rebels with their pistols can mow you down. So it's a very very defensible position for the rebels. They have a stone wall, they have the cavalry, they have a incredible artillery positions but for the union side you get a lot of tickets and you also have a lot of maneuverability you can attack that left flank you can attack that right flank you can go up the middle you can uh, push in really close where their artillery can't get you there's just a lot you can do with that map and i can see why it earns its number two ranking um it's pretty much a blank canvas to which you can paint the battle the only thing I don't like about it is there was not actually a battle fought in Nicodemus Hill. There was some minor skirmishing, but a lot of it was just an artillery duel. There wasn't an actual battle like we see take place. That's completely fictitious. Um, that's the only thing I have against Nicodemus Hill. Other than that, you get to play as a cool unit. Uh, you get to play the first Minnesota, uh, one of my favorites. They obviously got slaughtered at Gettysburg, the great fame. So that's what I think about Nicodemus. How about you? I... Uh... 
over time, I have disliked Nicodemus Hill more and more and more. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've played it a lot. Um, but yeah, I think it's overrated in my opinion. You know, I used to hate it, and then I used to love it, and now I'm kind of mad about it. So, you know, it is what it is. But it is a fair and, ba- fair and balanced map. So. Ah, yes, as Pioletti once said, Nicodemus Hill is a fair and balanced map. So, number yeah. one, Dunker Church, your thoughts? Dunker Church, hands down, the greatest map of the game. Obviously, this is like the, <laughs> you know, the poster child for War of Rights, obviously. It's the most famous part of Antietam is the Dunker Church. Um, and to that length, the developers have gone a long way to make it uh, the most balanced map in the game. The tickets are really balanced. The terrain is really balanced. The regiments are really balanced. The artillery positions, for the most part, are balanced. Um, you can do a lot as a union. Obviously, union attacks here. Uh, I think he plays the 72nd Pennsylvania, which is a really cool unit. It's the uh, the Fire Zouaves of the Pennsylvania... Uh, uh, Pennsylvania Brigade, I believe, of uh, 2nd Division of the 2nd Corps. But um, so they have really cool history there. They defended Pickett's Charge, obviously, in the Battle of Gettysburg. But uh, here they push up. You can either go left and flank the Dunker Church from the south, or you can go right, flank the Dunker Church from the north, try and push down that Hagerstown Turnpike, or you can go straight down the... Is that the Taney Town Road? I honestly don't know the name of that road. I, it slips, slips my mind at the moment. But you can go down the road from the Union Spawn. You can attack from so many different directions. The map is beautifully crafted. If you're a Confederate, you can uh, have great interior lines. I believe the roads shift just so that you can have interior lines there. You can hide in the West Woods. You have great artillery position up on that uh, little plateau in front of the Dunker Church. Um, you can push up, take the Union artillery. Uh, you, uh, you can do anything you want in those Westwoods, pretty much. It's great cover. And I, I just think Dunker Church is a, a brilliant map. I have fun if I'm playing that as a Rebel. I have fun if I'm playing that as a Yankee. I have fun if I'm losing. I have fun if I'm winning. I have fun on Dunker Church. So, yeah, with those thoughts, that is the Antietam Battlefield Rankings by the community that responded. Uh, now we're moving on to Harper's Ferry. So the average rank of the maps will be lower, but that's because there are less maps overall. So if that's why that is. So with that being said, let's start off with Harper's Ferry. There are 10 maps. In 10th place, we have Shenandoah Street. What Shenandoah Street genuinely is one of my favorite maps in the game. Um, it's, it's such close combat, even for Harper's Ferry. It's just, it's brutal, it's violent, you're right there next to each other. You can like look down the street, but at the same time, there's so much you can do with it. You could charge down that left street, you can go in through the back alleyway, you could come down through the, uh, through the railroad trestle, or you can flank around the, the Union flank uh, down by the, uh, the river. Um, there's just so many ways you can play it. It's such an intense map. I, I have fun if I'm playing that as a rebel or if I, I if I'm playing as a Yankee. I just I love Shenandoah Street, honestly. So I disagree with that. But at the same time I can see why people don't like it. Because it is such a small map and I do believe it is quite Confederate biased. So it's a fair ranking at number ten, but I would not have put it there. So moving on to number nine. So Maryland Heights had the same exact average ranking, but the uh software I had put it above, probably looking at the what places people put stuff on but yeah maryland heights is nine you could say it's 10th to tied with shenandoah but yeah collect your thoughts uh, yeah you know maryland heights um a lot of people hate it <laughs> so i'm surprised that didn't get the last but honestly i think the overlook spot uh is kind of a neat little thing they added um there's an infamous overlook in actual harper's ferry um where you overlook the entire town, and they added a little Easter egg. You can actually get to it in this. So if you uh, if you know the secret path, you can hike around and get to it. I love that they added that. For the actual combat at Maryland Heights, I think it's very confusing. Uh, the F2 map is wrong. It actually shows an old point of contention from like years and years and years ago now. Uh, so 
a lot of people get confused on that, especially new players. And you don't spawn on the point of contention. You spawn, like I said, on the old one that shows on the map. Uh, it's like this little camp overlooking Harper's Ferry. And it's the only map in the game where you don't actually spawn on the point if you're the defender. But uh, besides that, it's just kind of a, a crappy map. You have to you have to march uphill to fight it. You have to defend in a forest. You have to attack in a forest if you're a confederate. It's just kind of a chaotic map, and uh, I can see why it's ranked so low. Yeah, I would agree with that. But the overlook thing, like seeing the overlooking game and then going in real life and seeing it, yeah. uh, that's just it, beautiful. It's, it's awesome. So, at number eight, we do have the Washington Street. You know, this is a fair one. Um, Washington Street, I really like it because of the 39th New York. Uh, I think they're still on that map. I think it's Buck and Ball. It's a lot of fun. That house is a lot of fun. Um, as a, it is quite union biased ticket wise, but besides that, you know, it, it's an, it's an okay map, you know, I really got nothing against Washington street. Yeah. I haven't played I really it in a got while. Nothing for Washington street either, but you know. it is a map. On a it battlefield. Is, it's a map. <laughs> so next in our ranking at rank number seven, we have rivers crossing. I honestly thought this was going to be rank number 10. Seriously? <laughs> I love this map. Uh, personally, I like, uh, uh, I don't really like it. I think it's boring. I think even when the rebels charge, they never get that far. It is fun to mow them down, but after a while, it becomes meh. And if you're a rebel, you hate this map because you just die every single time you try and cross. Um, yeah. So I would assume this would have been lower. I, uh, it's like the same with Burnsides for me. If the, like, just the big charges and everyone dying, it's fun. If Confederates could charge time artillery right even then yeah. it's still very hard but i i suppose uh, yeah i suppose i'm looking at this with like two thousand hours so i'm like burnside bridge mass charge and casualties that's like boring yeah <laughs> fair enough <laughs> to be so, fair so I, I could definitely see that now that you mentioned that i wasn't even thinking about that yeah different perspectives on everything moving on to number six now we have boulevard heights camp yeah i i really like this map you get, uh, again, I think the 39th New York, the Garibaldi Guard. Uh, they're a cool unit with cool history, cool uniforms. And on the Rebel team, you get the, uh, I believe, the 1st Louisiana um, Battalion. It might be the 6th. I honestly can't remember which Louisiana it is. I believe the 1st. Uh, Colonel Wheat's Tigers. They have really cool uniforms. Um, obviously, they're the Louisiana Tigers. And uh, they get buck and ball. So you get buck and ball on that map. And that's why I love it. I think but, it's okay. Uh, it is quite Confederate biased, and um, there's only so many ways the Confederates can attack, so it does get kind of dull. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's a solid number six, I think. I think that ranking is kind of interesting, and I'll come back to that later. But with that being said, our rank number five is downtown. Downtown, as somebody who plays Union a lot, is my favorite map of the game. <laughs> My favorite can, uh, map on Harvest Fair, I should say. Because you do get to... It, I like holding the stairs, the stone wall, with my entire regiment with Buck and Ball. It, nothing puts a smile on my face more than obliterating a Confederate regiment at point blank with a Buck and Ball volley. It just, it's so much fun to just annihilate a group of Confederates. And telling fresh respawns to press 5 to load Buck and Ball, and then getting on those stone stairs there's just there's nothing better nothing better i love that map but if i was a confederate i would fucking hate downtown because all you do is charge and die try and get in that back alleyway so i can see why i got a number five but personally i put this as number one since i play union <laughs> i agree it's fun on union moving on to number four we have high street high street um is Mostly Confederate biased. Obviously, most, well, you'd assume most of Harbor's Ferry is going to be Confederate biased because every single one is a Confederate attack. Um, but obviously, downtown, downtown ticket wise, sorry not to go back to this, downtown ticket wise is uh, Confederate biased. However, <laughs> Union has way better positioning. Anyways, High Street. High Street Confederates have a good attack approach. They can come down the back alleys and flank the Union. They can come down 
around behind at the stone staircase and flank the Union. They could charge head on. They could go down the uh, the high street diverts. One goes up towards the point. One goes down also towards the point. So you could split in two there. It'd be capping point from either down the street or like up high where you can't get to each other. So it's very dynamic for as small a map as it is. And I think for that, it gets the number four spot because it can go really go either way. And it's a, it's a challenging close quarter combat map. Um, it's very dynamic. So I can understand that. Indeed. Moving on to number three, we have Boulevard Heights Readout. Now this confuses me why Boulevard Heights Camp was separate from Readout when they're kind of similar. Because especially um, with the dirt mound. I guess the only difference is coming around the uh, I forest. Would, I would disagree completely. Uh, Boulevard Heights Readout is still Confederate bias, but is much more evenly balanced ticket-wise towards the Union. Uh, Union defenders have much higher chance of winning Boulevard Heights. Both sides, I think, also get Buck and Ball. You get 39th New York again, and I think you also get the 1st Louisiana again. So, tons of fun there. Uh, Confederates can either flank around the left. There's a great defilade where it goes down towards, I believe, Schoolhouse Ridge. Uh, it goes down into the valley there. Uh, or uh, they can flank around the left. They can do all sorts of shit in the open. Uh, just a brutal close quarter combat is what I think most people like about on that map. Uh, I like it at number three. Yeah, fair enough. I like the uh, I like the dirt mounds. Makes it a little forty because like, there <laughs> yes. are more maps like that. So the, earth, the earthworks are neat. Yes, that'd be really cool. That'd be uh, I think better though if you could defend in them a little better, not have to kind of move up on the dirt mound to at least shoot over, but. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's why they were built in 1862. Was, they were built so you could use the earthworks, not cower behind them. So, Yeah. Um, so with that being said, we have our final two. It's between Schoolhouse Ridge and Harpers Ferry Graveyard. Which one do you think got number one? I really hope Schoolhouse Ridge because I hate Graveyard. You do? <laughs> yeah. So you'll be happy to know that Schoolhouse Ridge is number oh, one with fuck. Harpers Ferry and number two. So let's okay. start with Harpers Ferry Graveyard. Our graveyard, I understand why some people like it. And it, okay, I guess it's not as bad as I remember, but I would not have put it this high. Um, it is a lot of course, close quarter combat, but the Union doesn't get buck and ball on this map, which has always pissed me off. And the Confederates have a sharpshooter regiment, which always pisses me off because this is like one of the closest range maps in the game, and you're taking away the two things that make it fun for close quarter combat, which is buck and ball. You know what I mean? You you give us a sharpshooter regiment in only rifles. Like, I want buck and ball on that map. That would be so much fun with buck and ball. Um, so I think I don't like it out of spite of wasted potential because I think if both <laughs> if both teams had buck and ball, that map would just be insane. But uh, they don't, so I don't like it as much. But um, it's it's a neat little compact map. Confederates can either assault just through the through the graveyard they can assault down the uh the hill on the left side or they can assault uh in the wooded area to the right side and try and get around the union uh and attack their spawn so i think there's a lot of ways they could play it um it's a tough union defense so i can definitely see why it's 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 high up there at number two uh, i do have a bone to pick that um that part of harper's ferry Looks nothing like the real life Harper's Ferry graveyard, <laughs> and it's it's not just because the graveyard has grown in the last hundred sixty years. It's just because that's not what it ever really looked like. Uh, but that's the only part of Harper's Ferry that really looks remarkably different than real life. I had the opportunity to go there a couple months ago, and I was amazed at like how well the developers modeled everything, except for Harper's Ferry graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, no, other than that. I like Harper's Ferry Graveyard as number two. I just don't like the map personally. So yeah, number one, Schoolhouse Ridge. Schoolhouse Ridge, I think, gets the number one spot because it's the least Harper's Ferry-like Harper's Ferry map. <laughs> and people <laughs> hate Harper's Ferry. So um, I think uh, it's the most Antietam-like map out there. So I think that's why it gets number one. Personally, I put it as like, Number three or four for Harper's Ferry. 
if I'm playing Harper's Ferry, I want something close quarter combat, you know? Like Downtown or High Street or Shenandoah. That's what I would put as my top three. But Schoolhouse Ridge, it's a fun unit defense. You get the ball again. You get the artillery up in high positions. Confederates also got great positioning. I think Confederates also have buck and ball on this map. Uh, Confederates push up out of a low area to attack the Union, which is in the uh, the middle there. Uh, historically, there was some light skirmishing here. This is one of the only actual spots where there was combat at the Harper's Ferry. Uh, the actual battle it was this and Maryland Heights were the only two actual sites of combat. However, you know, it was just skirmishing here. It was mostly an artillery duel while uh, Jackson actually flanked around most of his men to threaten an assault on the uh, extreme Union left. Um, but anyways, I digress. Um, it's a fun map. It's a tough defense for the Union. Confederate artillery has great shots on them. But at the same time, you know, it's the most normal of all the maps, I'd say. So we could see why it gets the number one ranking. Yeah, I like the openness. Like you said, it's the most Antietam-like map just because how open it is. You're moving a lot on defense because Confederates can attack from so many different areas. So, yeah. With that being said, on to our last battlefield, the South Mountain Battlefield. Starting off with rank number six, we have Hatcher's Attack, and that annoys me. Oh, God. Thank God. I fucking hate Hatch's Attack. You hate Hatch's? This is my least favorite map in the game. I have only ever had fun playing this map like three times. Uh, okay, now that I'm actually thinking about Hatch's Attack, I don't know why I hate it so much, but I do. I hate this map so much. Union has to attack uphill through a cornfield, pretty much, to get to the point. Or they can go left and attack just uphill through a stony uphill. Or they can flank far right and just push up through the woods. But um, it just kind of sucks if you're Union. Uh, it, you don't have very many tickets, even though this game is typically oriented towards attackers ticket-wise. Union doesn't have a lot of tickets. They do get a sharpshooter regiment which is the second United States Sharpshooters, which should be on Hooker's push, but it's not. They need to put that on Hooker's push. But um, anyways, I think I, I think I beat that horse a little bit too much. But Hatch's attack, I think it's boring. And that is the end of my statement on Hatch's attack. I like Hatch's because it's not Anderson's or Reno's. I think we yeah, only played those two maps. That's fair. Um, it's something different, but it sucks. So, speaking of Reno's, rank number five is Reno's fall. Not by much, I though. Can, I could see Reno's fall at number five. It's very Confederate biased. Um, it's kind of derivative of a lot of the southbound maps, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a second. But uh, I like it if you're a Confederate, you can do a lot of flanking. You can flank around far right. You can flank around far left and get in the cornfield and wreak havoc. And that's a ton of fun. Uh, if you're a Union... You pretty much don't have any good spots to hold where you can see the Confederates coming at the point. So it's kind of a tough map to defend, easy map to attack. I can see why it's towards the bottom. So moving on to number four, we have Anderson's counterattack. Uh, you know, Anderson's, uh, I, I can understand it at number four. It's, um, I don't even know. It's, you know, it's it's very derivative of the same kind of layout Reno's Fall has. It's just a bunch of stone walls in the open, surrounded by woods. You know what I mean? That that's what a lot of the southbound maps are, and um, you know it's the Union just holding off a Confederate attack. Uh, I do put it in front of Reno's Fall and has it for the the sole reason that it is a lot of fun to defend, and I I believe Union gets artillery. I think. Yeah. And um, see, so you got the Ninth New York on there. That's a cool Union unit. Um, and you know, I don't know. I I've had some good fun on Anderson's, but it's also Confederate biased and very derivative. It just feels kind of boring, like the same old South Mountain. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe I played this game too much. <laughs> it it's a mad map. It deserves to be number like in the middle of the pack, which it is. So, yeah, moving on to now number three, we have Garland Stand. Personally, I like Garland Stand because it's a Union attack, 
but I'd say it's more Confederate biased. Or at least it's a it's more of a fair map, at least take it wise. Confederates have a very strong position. They get to defend a stone wall. And uh, I think their right flank is in the air, but it's also anchored by an artillery battery. So they get that going for and them. And some nice Union, Union, Yeah, Union artillery on Garland stance sucks. Might as well not even use it to waste a manpower. Uh, if you try and flank on the right, you're going to die in the open assaulting that stone wall. If you attack on the left, you're going <laughs> to... You're going to die assaulting that artillery battery or assaulting the, um, you know, just trying to push up through the rocks and getting tangled up and men getting separated. It's very confusing. But at the same time, I think it's it's quite a challenge. And I think a lot of the fun comes from that challenge. You know, you can push down that snake fence, uh, try and juke out that artillery, maybe pincer, do some pincer moves, flank them very far right while they're not looking, you know. I like Garland Stand because there's a lot of ways you can play it. Um, it's a solid defense, and it's a challenging map for both teams, I think, depending on the skill levels of the commander. So I like it as number three. Yeah, I would agree with that entirely. So last two, Colquitt's defense or Cox's push as number one? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Cox, Cox push, number one. So... Didn't get all of them right. It's Colquitt's Damn defense it. as number one. Colquitt. I like ah. Cox's push better. They're both amazing maps, though. So let's start yep. with Cox's push. Yeah, Cox push, one of my favorite maps in the game. It used to be, before artillery, it used to be a really fair map. And that's what I really liked about it. You could do a lot on that left flank. You could try and push up to that corn uh, on the right. Um, I don't know, just the rocks in the open made for some great skirmishing, great long-range shots. The point is at the very bottom of the hill uh, in the valley between the two sides always <laughs> fun last melees with both sides rushing towards each other in one giant uh, combat melee the frenzy I really like Cox's push but with the addition of artillery I think it honestly does push it to number two for me now that I'm thinking about it um, because it it does make it pushes it towards uh, <laughs> being confederate biased honestly um at artillery for the Confederates Union doesn't get any. Confederate artillery can just hit shots all day long. They get a nice hill for a backstop, but even if they overshoot, what would be a massive overshot can still kill some men on that map. Um, I think it's way too Confederate biased now, but it is overall a fun map for both sides, so I like it at number two. Even with artillery in my mind, uh, I like it because... If it gets to a, if Union comes down and takes that corner and just shoots, or they're shooting shooting from the top of the hill, artillery coming in and killing a bunch of men, it makes it interesting. And I I still so find that it, it also forces the Union to be more aggressive as well, especially yep. early on, because yeah, can't you can't just yeah exactly. Confederates are gonna hit if if they're half decent artillery guys, they're gonna hit their shots. So yep. number Absolutely. one, Colquitt's defense. Your thoughts? I love Colquitt's defense. It's um. Uh... It's pretty much where the Iron Brigade earned their title, Iron Brigade. Uh, that's that's one of the coolest things for me. You get to play as, I think, the 19th Indiana's on that map, and I can't remember for the life of me the other regiment at the moment. But um, it's just, I have a ton of fun on the map. You can play it several different ways. It's the, you know, the punch bowl map, if you don't know, you're listening out there and you're trying to remember the southbound maps, it's the punch bowl map. Uh, you can either push down that hill and try and take the point right away. You can push up far left and push through the woods, which is one of my favorite things to do. There's some great rocks in there. Or you can push up right and try and take the Confederate artillery at the top of the hill. Um, so many ways you can play that as a Yankee. If you're a Confederate, it's a, a tough defense, but your your artillery gets some great shots on the uh, the Yankees. And the Yankees have to come at you from the open while you have good position on either the high ground uh, or in the woods. So I think I like Colquitt's as number one. I should have probably guessed that. But um, it is a it's a fun map. I like I like Colquitt's quite a bit. So. Yeah, I would agree. You can fight in the forest. You can fight in the open. You can fight on hills. It's dynamic, and I love it. It's, it's a great map. So, yeah. That's your top 25. I, I don't know why I put 25, but um, I wonder if I was going off of college football. That's probably where I got it from. Um, probably. You know, I was, I was kind of wondering that the entire time. I yeah. was like, 
thought there were 30 some odd maps in the map cycle, but uh... yeah, I think when I was making this, I instinctively did college football, but yeah. Um, so yeah, the uh, very interesting results. It's very fun to see. We'll probably do be doing more polls in the future because these are, these are just fun to look at. It's interesting. All the data for these uh, polls will be in the description if you want to check that out because you can see like for example the maps were tied you can see like oh more people put this as their number one so that's why it got above or if you're just interested in anything in general so yeah i appreciate you being on collector thank you for all your wisdom on this map uh thanks for having me even though i probably talked way too much hey it's fine uh get some knowledge if you want it the more you know um <laughs> so yeah, yeah. With that um, being said, yeah. I, I trust Jam. If you're watching this, I'm sorry for any uh, any remarks I may have said uh, while I was chastising Campfire Games for the first United States Sharpshooters. It, um, I, yeah, it gets a little, the, you know, the passion. Just, uh, I can get a little heated sometimes, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens. So, yeah, with that being said, we're going to be do, trying to do more stuff like this outside of just covering your normal battles because uh, we want this to grow more into a community thing so yeah uh, appreciate everyone's support please like comment share subscribe for more and we'll see you guys in the next one have a good day or good night see ya